When I walked into the healing rooms one time and I saw Claudia Klan, her paintings, it just stunned me and I wanted to see more. It was so powerful. It was like walking into heaven and doors opening and people just having an encounter with Jesus. It was so good. Then I heard her story and I was like, no way. And I knew you had to hear it. So here it is. <laughs> Claudia, welcome. Hi, thank you, Barb. I'm honored, so thrilled to be here. You are an artist. You are involved with painting. I get to, I, I wear the label. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> artist. So how did that start? Oh my gosh. Well, I called myself the most uncreative person I knew. No, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I don't get it. I, looking back, I, what a ridiculous lie to believe, but I believed it. Okay. And my mother took up painting in her 50s, and she was quite good, you know. And so I had that comparison, and I never took a painting or drawing classes or any of that kind of creativity. But I was doing creativity in other ways. I just didn't, it didn't count in my mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we used to come to Bethel for conferences, and I was always drawn to the artists on stage when they would paint during a That's conference. That's interesting. I would, the dancers, too. I would always sit on the right, used to be on the right side, and I'd sit as close as I could get. My poor husband had to tolerate my <laughs> seating choices. But that was the creativity in you already. It was, I was so drawn to it. Yeah, just mesmerized by it. And uh, what really captured it is I used to volunteer on the pastor on call staff here at Bethel, at here, not here at Bethel, but at Bethel. And uh, one of the gals I was working with, I happened to mention, oh, I wish I could paint, you know, I wish I could, oh, I can't do that, you know, that sort of story. And she said, um, oh, you could do it. I'm like, nah, you don't know. You don't get it. Not me. Like you, I heard you say. I know, I know. Yeah, <laughs> true. We got to get over that. <laughs> and um, she said, listen, here's what you do. It'll change your life. You've got to paint. It'll change your life. So go to Walmart. Ask Holy Spirit what paints to buy, what colors. Couldn't she just tell you what no, to get? She, she wanted me to go with Holy Spirit. Go with Holy Spirit. Ask him what paints what brushes, what paper, you know, whatever you like, just ask and or whatever you're drawn to, you know, go with that. So I, I did. So that day, I'm like, really, Sadie, really, I can do that. <laughs> so I, I told my I think my husband must have been coming to pick me up or something. And I said, we're, we're going to Walmart. <laughs> and we literally drove to Walmart, told him the story, we went in there and I spent whatever, you know, an hour picking out stuff at Walmart. But, but this is so, this is so, what's the right word? Crazy. I expect you to go to a paint <laughs> store and, and it's not romanticized, right? I loved the fact that she said Walmart. And I love the fact I realized what I needed was permission. Really? All I needed was an invitation with permission attached to it. It'll change your life. You can do it. Just go, go with Holy Spirit and, and go to Walmart. Like, in other words, it doesn't have to cost and a lot of money. And it was not intimidating. No, because it was at Walmart. Right, right. If so, I went into a paint store, I you know, like an artist supply store, I probably would have been like, oh, I don't belong here. Right, exactly. That would be me. Right. So, <clears throat> you started painting. Did you go with the Lord right from the get-go? Oh, no. Or I mean, you kind I'm of just monkeyed like playing. around I'm on your just own. playing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a little bit of a risk taker, so I'm willing to just play and explore. Okay. So I just started doing that, and I just, you know, I didn't even know how to hold a brush. Now, now wait, I have another question. <laughs> so a lot of people do art for healing. Was that you? No. 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 Okay. I just was, I can't even tell you what was going on in me. <laughs> All I knew is that I was going to explode Okay. if I didn't pursue that. And I had two things I chased after right at the same time. One okay. was learning how to play the piano. I had a background in piano as a kid. And so I bought a keyboard, hired a, a, a teacher. Actually, we did a trade since I'm a coach. And so I helped her. She helped me. And I started painting at the same time. Well, Learning to play the piano is really, really hard <laughs> to me, mm. much, much harder than playing with art. Oh. And I could sense that I could have more opportunity, more impact with art than I would ever have with music. Okay. I mean, you know, I was yeah. never going to be good enough in music. There's no way. <clears throat> so I, after about a year of that, I sort of dropped the piano and stuck with the art. 
And in the meantime, though, I got very frustrated because I didn't know what I was doing. And I had, you see, you see, that's what I relate to. Yeah. All right. <laughs> then so what? here's what happened. So I happened to go to uh, a woman who she's no longer in our community, but she put on a little sort of unlock your creativity event. I'm like, oh, I got to be there. So I went and it was great. And all it did was make me crazier because I now she's helping stimulate uh, vision and creativity and, and seeing and thinking and I couldn't I couldn't reproduce it and so then I begged her for lessons and she eventually invited me to join her homeschool art class of middle schoolers Oh yeah. And how old were you at the time? Uh, not all that much younger. <laughs> and I was I'm like, oh, I don't I don't yeah, know about no, that. That's no, not yeah. gonna work. No, really, I've had I've had adults come, it, they're fine, you'll they'll be fine, you'll be fine. I'm like, okay. So it's you and fourteen year olds yeah, pretty well, much? Yeah, exactly. Basically. Middle schoolers, whatever age they are, 13, 12 yeah. to 14. And, um, but thankfully, there were a couple other women in there. Uh -huh. So she had invited some others in there. And um, I ended up making two very good friends in there that are still like my besties okay. from that experience. But we were in that class. It was so cute because it was off her porch in the back with the leaky uh, leaky roof in the winter and the cooking in the hot weather and but I learned enough to give me some satisfaction to keep going and playing and and then eventually I did go to Shasta College and take a couple of art classes which really helped I was part of Teresa Dedman's world she she the whole spun off the whole creative arts part of Bethel so you're doing all this. So I'm pursuing, I'm pursuing everything I possibly can. <clears throat> oh, that, that is really, really fun. Yeah. So, yes, God is creativity. Mm -hmm. He created you. Mm -hmm. He created me. He created these incredible sunrises and sunsets. He's all about creativity. Often we don't see ourselves that way because often creativity is taken out of us the older that oh, we that's get. True. The, the that's older so that we get. Stay tuned, because I want to share some paintings with you and a story about her son that really touched my heart. We will be right back. Do you hear God speak? Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Looking to dive deeper in your relationship with God? To activate the person you were created to be? Empower a Champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak. Join us for a free three-day challenge at EmpowerAChampion.com. Claudia Klan never thought she was going to paint at the level she's at today or that she was an artist till people started telling her differently and she started just trying something out. Can you imagine just going to Walmart and saying, yeah, I'll just try this and this and this because the Holy Spirit tells me so. And all the rest of us are like, uh-huh, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. But yet, if you look at these paintings now and see how God uses our creativity to invite us in into this whole new world of the Lord, it is absolutely amazing. So you finish middle schoolers, you learn to pray, to, to paint to with kids yeah right basically who are better than me oh, oh that makes it even <laughs> harder no. but you learned the techniques <clears throat> what did you do after those college classes when you started mm. investing more were you driven was it a passion mm. why were you so excited about well, creativity? well i love the connection with the god connection so i don't see myself as an artist who's going to um run out and paint wildflowers out in the meadow i mean i might but I'm everything I do is about identity and our identity in Christ. So art became a vehicle of doing that. And so when when I realized that I could um, learn to paint, and then I began to have uh, encounters with the Lord through art. And when I would uh, put a piece of art up on display in the healing rooms and somebody and it wasn't even all that good, right? It was early, like, Ten, uh, seven years ago or something and they'd stand in front of it weeping I knew weeping. that 
the power of art to impact the heart in a in a way that bypasses the brain. So when I say the brain, I mean the left brain, you know, our intellect and our logic and reason. And why is somebody painting and uh, crying in front of this painting? Well, I mean, it could be a million reasons, right? But I know they're encountering the love of God wow. and or they're discovering something true about their own identity in there. Mm -hmm. And so I, everything I do is is all about identity or our destiny or our position. So tell and me a little more about this identity you're talking about. You mean we're daughters and sons of the king, yeah. we're priests. Is that what you're talking yes, about? Yes, and knowing who you are and, and embracing who you are in Jesus because of Jesus and how he's perfected. We are perfect in him. We mm -hmm. are accepted in him. We're accepted in the love, beloved. We're uh, adored, we're loved, we're cherished. We are his bride, his darling. And even if you're a man, you're still his bride and darling and right. precious to him. And so my ministry, which happens to include art, is all around that. It's all around uh, helping people, mostly women, step into who they really are because of Jesus and, and what he's done for them and how he sees them. And th this is like, like I said, I called myself the most uncreative person I knew which was a complete and total lie. I was already creative, but I didn't acknowledge it, but he knew it. Wow, oh, that's so good. I have, I have a story about that if I can. Yeah, I'd like to hear that in. story okay. <laughs> about you. So when I was a little girl, I was raised Catholic, uh -huh. and we had, uh, my mother had a, a Catholic, um, you know, sort of a coffee table Bible. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. I thought it was, of course, I thought it was this big. It really isn't that big, but it had f color photos of Vatican art, all the masterpieces. Okay. Do you know, as a child, I remember spending hours by myself thumbing through and studying and staring at those really? photographs. So I believe this, I didn't make that connection until maybe just five years ago. I believe that God taught me who he is through the art, and he also wow. was um, drawing me into the world of creativity. He was planting those seeds. So now I'm talking ago. about art, you have a situation that happened with your son yes. that nobody would have ever put together to, right. to that way. No, it's a wild it story. It's something about you making a print. Tell me a little yeah. bit about this print that you made. Okay, so it's my son-in-law, Matt. He, um, the, okay, the story starts like this. I had a dream, woke up from a dream, and I saw a picture of Jesus in the cosmos with his arms out wide. Well, okay, this goes back to when I was just beginning to paint way outside of my skill level. It still would be outside of my skill level. So you painted it? I painted it, did the best I could. Uh, it's, a, it, I, uh, it's long, it's like three feet by just narrow, 15 inches. Hmm. So it's really hard to reproduce on, on an eight by 10 or a 10 or 11 by 14. So it just comes out this sort of long, skinny mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. print. And we were hosting Airbnb in our home at the time, and this lovely woman and her uh, teenage, young teenage daughter came to stay with us. And she was looking through her art, my art, for them to take home. And she picked that painting and a couple others, you know, prints of those. Okay, fast forward, she goes back to Colorado. In the meantime, we did stay connected, and because our daughter and son-in-law live in Colorado in the Denver area. So you were in one state and they were in the yes. other. Yes, I'm sorry, All I should right. have said that. Yes, California, okay. Denver. Okay. Um, okay. Fast forward to the COVID world. My son in law got uh, very sick on that Delta variant and he Im pretty much immediately, within a few days, ended up in the hospital. Oh, that's fast. And, um, and was begging for the rest for the ventilator because he couldn't breathe. Okay. And of course, uh, they did, and they did the normal protocol, which um, you know, to avoid being political, I won't comment. But it's not necessarily. I understand. Right. All right. Um, so uh, he was on the ventilator for about fifty-two days. That is a long time. Long time. It's a long time. And and I want to talk to you about that. There's these moments that you get totally stuck in life. 
and it's a mural on a wall or a piece of art or somewhere that you walk that just hits you in a way you can't and it just stops you in your tracks and it's just this excitement that comes out and when i look at claudia's paintings and i see these paintings you get to see them really soon and there is this excitement of expectation with a joy attached mm -hmm. that just flows out of these paintings so that's kind of what you do but now you have your son in a situation that is desperate and I can hardly wait for you to see it what happens next because that is the moment that beyond your wildest dreams something happens that God is using that you as a beginning artist would never ever put together I want you to do see this stay tuned we will be right back do you hear God speak Hearing God's voice can change your perspective on everything. It changes the course of your life. Learn how to break the obstacles and words that hold you back. Looking to dive deeper in your relationship with God? To activate the person you were created to be? Empower a Champion can jumpstart you to hear God speak. Join us for a free three-day challenge at empowerachampion.com. So Claudia, your husband, your your son-in-law is really sick. Yeah. COVID hits him hard. Real hard. He ends up in the <laughs> hospital. Is on a ventilator nonstop. Did you want to just fly over there with one of your paintings and and say, "Hey, God ministers yeah. to you," or just want to pray? Or it's at a distance, you know. It was really hard, and our daughter didn't want us to come. She wanted to sort of preserve us, and you know, until maybe the worst time or something. It doesn't she, sound so, good. So, right. So we were like always on standby and talking to her and of course praying. And I was, I did a GoFundMe for them and I did prayer. I mean, all, everybody I knew around yeah. the world was praying for him. And eventually um, what happened is we were, uh, so I mentioned that that painting, that image of that painting came to me in a dream. Right. And what happened is the woman who bought it, she was a nurse at the time, but she, in the meantime, so now this is four years later maybe, uh -huh. she, she got her, her nurse practitioner degree and was in the hospital. She, she figured out, because she was watching my Facebook posts, that she was working in the same hospital Matt was in. Wow. So I think she might have gone to check on him once and then the Lord prompted her in a dream to bring that print. That same print from that you. That same print that she bought. Now that print, I think you're going to show it, but that's called Come Leave Your Worries Behind, and it's an open invitation from Jesus in wow. the cosmos. So what I love about that is it's, he's outside of time and space. This was given to me in a dream uh, four years, maybe more, before he used it when this woman, Robin, walked into his room. By then he was uh, still on the ventilator, but a little bit more conscious. They'd begin to wean him off some of those drugs. And she walked in with, in the room, and he knew that it was mine. How did he know? Which surprised me, because I asked him that. He said, Claudia, I'm a, he's a graphic artist. He's, he's a completely visual guy. So even though like we never had a conversation around it or anything, he'd seen it in my home. Wow. He'd seen the original still hangs in my house. So he recognized it as mine right away. And he knew when she walked in with that, because there's no natural connection, that God knew where he was and had this under control. And he, it was wow. a turnaround moment for him. And eventually he did come out of the hospital, of course, and he recovered. And, you know, he gets to raise his two teenage, young teenage sons at the time. So, and uh, can you imagine? Can you imagine? God's using a painting from four years ago from a beginner painter that a, a, a woman buys that becomes a nurse practitioner that walks in in, all, in in a complete different state into a hospital with this painting. And it's the turnaround point for him to get better. Mm -hmm. That's God. Mm -hmm. That's it's God. only God. 
So it makes it's fully it's not healed possible. after 52 days. <laughs> fully that healed. is amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Now your paintings speak life. Uh, one of your favorite paintings is of this lady that is holding the door open. I think you even brought it right I now. Did. Yeah, I did. So, me so let me it. take a look at okay. that painting right yeah. now. I have it right and here. Tell me a little bit when you have that painting. You know, tell me about that, what that is all about. All right, this also came in a dream, kind of interesting, because I woke up with the song. Now, I can't sing, so I really can't sing, so I'm, right. not, I'm not lying. Because <laughs> it, it, it speaks a lot. It said, um, it's an old Peter Townsend song from the 80s, and it's, my love opens the door. <laughs> my love opens the door and I heard that refrain and I heard it over and over and over that morning and I mean I'm a little slow and I think maybe a couple hours later I'm finally like what what is that all about so then I'm like okay God obviously you're getting my attention with that and so I started uh, reading uh, scriptures pertaining to open doors and I discovered the um, you know, some of my favorite scriptures, you know, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He who opens the door, I will come in and dine with him. But what happened was I, I stopped there for a minute and I kind of lamented thinking, oh, is this, am I getting some kind of, you know, chastisement that I'm not maybe letting him in? Well, I knew that wasn't true because I know where I'm at in my relationship right, with him. Right. And so I kept reading. And then it goes from, that's uh, Revelation 3, whatever, the very end of chapter three. See, I stand at the door. Yeah. Anyone that opens it, I'll come in and dine with them. Right. That one. That one. Which we think, we think it's a salvation message. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's an invitation into intimacy. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Because the very next chapter, uh, for one, John said, Behold, I was in the Spirit. Oh, wow. And I saw a door open in heaven. And that's I heard your painting? a voice say come up here wow and so that's what this painting is wow that is so that's good what this painting so is. that goes into the throne room that's into the throne room wow. that's into heaven's intimacy it's into relationship with jesus it's but it's not just salvation it's not just get saved so that when you die you go to heaven this is an invitation into intimacy right now with a relationship with him. Doesn't yeah, it say uh, in the Lord's Prayer on earth as, as it, it is in heaven? heaven? So that's what right. you're talking about. Right. Now you also have a book. I beca do. Because the, your, your paintings speak life, you know? Um, you, you have a book and that's kind of, I call it the joy book. Yes. So tell me a little bit it's about it. It's called that. Joy in Living Color. And it's, uh, it's a, it says, hearing God's voice to unlock abundant joy in Jesus. So it's a devotional workbook it's deep and it's uh, very impacting, but I, I've written, so I took all my paintings and I culled it down to four paintings of Jesus because I want to convey a relationship and I want to get out of religion. So mm -hmm. I talk about Jesus as shepherd, friend, lover, and companion. Mm -hmm. And I have paintings that go with those. Mm -hmm. I told you I do identity. So um, this is a book to lead women. It's, you know, it's written to a woman's heart, but men have gone through it. And I've written um, 24 love letters. I crafted first person from Jesus to the reader, you know, to just sort of invite them and in a way challenge some traditional thinking. And then there's a uh, uh, activations that go with each one of those and they're all different so it might be just writing journaling listening it might be uh, doing some expressive art some art therapy um, coloring I've I made coloring pages as well as uh, neurographic so, so art. If, one of, if people want to get a hold of this book or if they're interested, what is your website? Well, that book can be found through, it's called joyinlivingcolor.com okay. or, or Amazon, of course. And then my primary website is ClaudiaClan.com, right. which has links to everything. So Claudia, thank you for sharing. So I never thought before about creativity and painting what you do is all about identity with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So there, there's this scripture that, that I just kind of picked out that I thought was so cool. 
Um, then Moses said to the Israelites, this is in Exodus. Mm -hmm. Then Moses said to the Israelites, see the Lord has chosen Bazalel, son of Uri, the son of, of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the spirit of with God, yes. with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and yeah. with all Thank kinds you, of skills yeah. to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. Yeah. God's still doing that today. Absolutely. And He is showing the heavens to us on earth through the art as well, yeah. like you learned yeah. even out of these Bibles yes. when you grew up. That, yeah. that is just amazing. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And mm. art is so impactful. It touches the heart, and it can bypass all of their barriers. Especially with children, with counseling and different yeah, things. Yeah, oh, sure. Thank you so much for being you on the show. Um, you know, maybe I should try to paint someday. Yes. <laughs> so it sounds amazing. And I just want to let you know, these artists in the world, it, it's almost like they're in a different arena or whatever. But what they bring to us is a gift from God himself. And I encourage you to enjoy that and, and just celebrate that with them, but also to take in the message that the Lord sh shares through prophetic painting or identity painting or anything else. And talking about your identity right now, God loves you. I just want you to know that you matter and you too have a message to be shared in this world, yeah. whatever that looks like or who you are. So I'd love for you to contact us. We'd love to pray with you, connect with you, and help you to see the identity that God has in you already and what he has called you for. The number is 855-515-5550 or go to our website, barbtv.org. And I just want to leave you still with this one scripture because excited about it right <laughs> and it says here in Psalm 19 God's splendor is a tale that is told written in the stars mm. space itself speaks his story through the marvels of the heavens his truth is on tour in the starry fault of the sky showing his skill in creations craftsmanship mm. you're amazing and God loves you have a great day I sat on my bed. I wasn't feeling too well at all. The Lord spoke to me and said, if you go to bed tonight, you're not going to get back up. I drove myself to the hospital. The doctor said, either you're going to get kidney transplant or dialysis for the rest of your life. What was the problem? Total body failure. Now, when you need healing yourself, and yet you start praying for others, how did that work? 